Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18.4 beta four has been out for a few days and iOS 18.3.2 released to the public a couple weeks ago, but there's even more features and changes to talk about since the iOS 18.4 beta four is out. What's new video. We'll also talk about some Apple news, some new features, and also the experience I've been using it full time on my 16 pro max and iPad pro. And many of you have been using it full time based on the YouTube community poll where at the time of this video, there's over 9,000 votes and 117 comments. I've gone through all the comments to determine what the experience is like for everyone. And we'll talk about some of your comments toward the end of the video. So be sure to stick around. Now lately, YouTube's actually been having some issues where you might have low quality. Many people have said my videos are blurry, but it's not my video. It's YouTube setting down the quality to 144. So if you go into a video here, on my video about the iPhone 16 Pro Max six months later, you can see the quality started off at 144. You can then change this, of course, to advanced and then the highest setting, which is 4K. Unfortunately, this is an issue that is going on for YouTube and they've acknowledged it. So this is something that they've acknowledged on their website saying video and shorts playing in low quality on iOS. It's not a problem with my videos. It's not a problem with iOS. It's a problem with YouTube themselves. And they even say YouTube streaming at 144 or 360, despite strong internet connection. So you can set it to 1080p or 4k, and sometimes it will just jump back down. So just know that they're working on it and it's still an issue. Apple is getting serious about fixing Siri. After the delay of Siri with context from Apple intelligence, Apple is now moving management around to make sure Siri finally gets the improvements it deserves. The person in charge of creating the vision pro Mike Rockwell has been moved to take over Siri and will report to Craig Federighi, according to a report from Mark Gurman the other day, Siri certainly needs some help now as it can't even answer basic questions yesterday. It couldn't even answer what month it is. It looks like they've fixed that. What month is it? And it looks like it actually works now, but yesterday this didn't work. There were all sorts of issues and Apple is taking this seriously and going to fix this finally. So I think this is the right person to do it as this is someone that's more of an innovator and has been critical of Siri internally at Apple. So this is great to see. Also, all of those Apple intelligence promises that were missed may pose a problem for Apple with a new false advertising lawsuit that was launched in San Jose, California. That's being brought against them. They say, contrary to defendants claims of advanced AI capabilities, the products offered a significantly limited or entirely absent version of Apple intelligence, misleading consumers about its actual utility and performance. So they go on to talk about this a little bit more. And I know a lot of people have mentioned this in the comments where this is going to cause problems for Apple since they advertised features that aren't even here yet with Siri with context. Apple's been removing those ads and placing other information out there, such as new advertisements for Apple. Apple and more for the iPhone 16, not talking about Apple intelligence. The next version of iOS could be getting more than a redesign or things that have been leaked and rumored as the European commission this week said, Apple will be legally required to include changes in iOS 19 and iOS 20 on their website about interoperability questions and answers. You can scroll down through and see what they're requiring. For example, third party smartwatches must be able to display and interact with iOS notifications by the end of 2025, which is probably iOS 19.2 or something a little bit earlier than that. Automatic audio switching currently on AirPods must be allowed for third party headphones eventually. And Apple will also have to allow for AirDrop and AirPlay to work with third parties by June of 2026. There's more things that are demanding in here. And I'll link this in the description if you want to see it, but it looks like Apple may be forced to do this. They've pushed back against it, but we don't know if this is actually going to be something they win or if they'll have to include it. Apple's digital ID has been a very slow release as different states in the USA have to work with Apple to allow the integration. Apple has added eight additional states listed that are planned to add the feature, but don't just have it yet. So if you go into the wallet, you can go and add a driver's license and ID cards, and you can see everything that's allowed currently. However, it looks like Montana, West Virginia, Connecticut, Kentucky, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Utah, and Illinois are next. Now, again, the states have to work directly with Apple and any other governments as well. So that's why we're not seeing this roll out very fast. When it comes to new features, Apple's working to bring the AirPods to a hearing test and hearing aid features to Canada. Apple told the Toronto star this week that they're working with the Canadian provinces to allow the feature to be used soon without a prescription from a doctor. So in the United States, we have this, you can go into your AirPods settings, 
Go to Hearing Assistance On and take a hearing test. This is something that hopefully will roll out around the world, but again, Apple has to work with local governments to allow it and enable it. With iOS 18.4, Apple has added quite a few new shortcuts. However, they've removed some in beta 4. If we go into shortcuts and then search for TV when adding an action, you can see quite a few here. However, if we look at beta 3 side by side with beta 4, type in TV, you can see there's quite a few more options on the left. So they've removed some of the options for TV for whatever reason. Hopefully they'll bring those back by the time it releases to the public. Search has gotten a little bit of an update. Now, one thing Apple promised was that search in general would be much better with iOS 18. However, if we search, you'll see some recents here and maybe we search for display. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but we get more information and additional information that helps with responsive search and the settings results. So you'll see quite a few things here now, and it looks like they're finally updating this. Also, when you open up Safari, something else Apple's recently added is your recent searches show up. Now you can now disable this in beta four. So if we go into our settings, then we'll cancel here, go down to apps, go to Safari. Within the Safari options, you'll see it says show recent searches. We can turn that off, go back to Safari. Let's cancel this here and then we'll go in clear that and it won't show those searches. So that's something you can disable if you'd like to. However, I do find it fairly useful. Now the iPhone 17, 17 Pro and iPhone 17 Pro Max and iPhone 17 Air designs look to be basically finalized. Again this week, Sonny Dixon showed off some more dummy models, but this time around he pointed out that there will be a material change below the camera tray. The chassis of the phone will be a unibody, so basically one complete piece of aluminum, similar to what we have with the iPhone 5 and 5S, but instead we'll have a little bit of an area cut out below that around the Apple logo that will be glass to allow for NFC and things such as wireless charging or maybe other functions as well. So those are things that we can expect with the latest update. Now, as I've mentioned before, iOS 19 is shaping up to be a huge redesign finally, according to Mark Gurman. We're hearing it's going to be a complete redesign with different menus, a different structure, a different way of using iOS, and something for a newer generation. It's been almost two decades now since we've had the same design, so it looks like they're getting ready to change this up, and hopefully it's something that we really appreciate, and stability is added to that, because there's a lot of bugs to talk about in just a moment. When it comes to releases this week, well, Apple stopped signing iOS 18.3.1, meaning you can only downgrade to iOS 18.3.2. There are no other versions at this point, so hopefully we'll have something else soon with iOS 18.4. There was also an update this week to the MagSafe 25 watt charger. You can tell that charger easily because of the braided cable that you see here, and they updated it to version 2A146. The only way really to update it is to use it, and it will update on its own. There's no other real indication other than under about where you can see the firmware number. Apple also released a new Safari technology preview this week. So if we go back to our browser here, swipe over, you'll see if we go to download Safari technology preview, they've updated it to version 215. So this was released this week and it works on macOS Sequoia and macOS Sonoma if you want to test out the latest technology and see what it's like. Now we are expecting iOS 18.4 beta 5 or iOS 18.4 RC this coming week, probably on Monday, since they've been following that trend, I would expect one of those releases. Also, since we don't have iOS 18.3.1 signed, we could see them push out the RC as soon as Monday with a public release, possibly in April. They've said April before, so we could see it on the 31st. So we could see the public release the first or second week of April, but it's looking like it may be closer to the first week, given that they unsigned the last version. Now, also we could see this week, WWDC 2025 invites. That's typically what they'll do. They'll push those out and say, this is when it's taking place. And it usually will take place in June. I would expect it on the 9th, given that it was on the 10th last year. And that's where we'll see iOS 19 for the first time. So we'll see that along with all the new versions, Mac OS 16, watch OS 12, iPad OS 19 and others. Also, we can expect iOS 18.5. Mac rumors already saw it in the analytics, and Mark Gurman says to expect it in May. So it looks like we're ramping up to a regular release schedule before iOS 19 is shown to the public. When it comes to the overall experience, well, I did want to mention iOS 18.3.2 a little bit, as people are having issues with the camera. It seems that if you go into the camera here, We'll go into the camera. Let me place my phone behind it. Some people are saying if you go above three times zoom or up to five times zoom, it's not focusing properly for a lot of people. 
or people are opening up the camera and it's just not responding or it's crashing. There seems to be quite a few issues with the overall focus. So many of you have said that I've seen this in different places online as well. Other people have said that AirPods are disconnecting for them while they're using it. And also that's on 18.4 beta four a little bit. It seems to be happening. Apps are crashing on 18.3.2. There's touch issues for some still stutters and micro stutters for whatever reason. And also the alarm bug has returned that hasn't been fixed. And also that affects standby mode. So if you're using a phone with standby mode, so that means you've got it plugged in or charging, you turn it on the side lock it. It should go into a standby mode. If it's still, hopefully it turns on here. So with standby mode, some people have said that it's not turning back on after it's sort of gone to sleep and then you wake up in the morning. So it looks like it's an issue for some people, but it is working for me without an issue, but some people are having problems with it. Now, when it comes to iOS 18.4 beta four, it's been pretty good, but there's still some bugs here and there. For example, stutters seem to be mostly gone until they return a few days later and then a reboot fixes it. So going through apps, it seems to be okay, but then occasionally you'll go into an app, whether that's the camera, for example. So if we go into the camera, I showed this in a different video. I turned it around and it was just blank. It took about five seconds for it to activate and work properly. So we're seeing more and more odd issues with the camera for some reason. And again, it goes along with the stutters and slowness we're seeing throughout. There's touch delays for me. So if I go into settings, sometimes it takes a second to, to sort of just open settings. That's an odd bug I have. And then also light and dark mode icons aren't working properly for some. So if we go in here, you'll see on telegram, it's working properly here. But if we take a look at the iPad, I'm in dark mode with the icons the icon is light again. So we're seeing this bug again. We've seen this before and it looks like it's returned for some reason on some icons. It doesn't happen all the time, but it's definitely an issue from time to time. Others are having problems with notification scrolling. So they don't scroll properly for some, particularly in landscape mode. And then the home screen wallpaper is going black for some. So if they set the wallpaper, sometimes it goes black. The wallpaper saturation bug is still there. You'll see it desaturate. You can see that just desaturates the wallpaper for whatever reason. In some updates, it saturates it too much. So it's definitely an odd bug. Now CarPlay is working, but the phone sometimes will just disconnect for no reason. Also, it seems to be very slow with iMessage sometimes where you'll go to respond. It could take a few seconds for it just to find the message and then play it back. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. Sometimes you respond and it doesn't send anything. So there's some odd bugs there with that again. I did once have an odd vibration issue where it was a little off for whatever reason. And again, camera issues seem to be the major issue this time around, but Apple does seem to be serious about fixing issues such as Siri and bugs, but it's going to be a while at this point. I don't think we'll see Siri with context until 2026 or iOS 20. And I think some of the bugs probably won't be fixed until iOS 19 is released. If it is truly re-architected when it comes to the performance, I showed you some of that before with iOS 18.4 beta four on the 16 pro max and on the iPhone 11, again, until it's a couple days later, it seems to be nice and fast, whether that's scrolling with ProMotion, ProMotion seems fine. I've had no issues with it ramping up or down and going into certain apps seem to be okay most of the time, but then occasionally it will take forever to open. You'll touch it. It just doesn't open. We can go into weather here. You'll see it works okay. And if we go into the camera, we'll open them at the same time. They seem to be working okay. But again, sometimes it just doesn't. And there's not really an explanation for that. As far as the heat is concerned, it generally stays pretty cool for me on iOS 18.4 beta four. Some people report it getting a little bit warm. I haven't experienced that, but let's take a look with the thermal camera on 18.3.1 and the latest beta. On the 16 Pro Max running 18.4 beta four, we've got about 31.5 degrees Celsius. So it's staying fairly cool. And then on 18.3.2 at idle, it's even cooler than that at about 27.8 or 28 degrees Celsius. So in general, both are staying nice and cool, especially at idle. This is some of the best we've seen from this. So let me know if you're experiencing the same or if you're having issues with the overall heat. When it comes to overall battery life, while well, iOS 18.3.2 battery life seems to be about the same, about half of the people using it say that it's as good as 18.3.1 and a lot of people say it's worse. So it just depends, but it does have a major security fix in it. So that's why I recommended people update to it, but you still may have some battery issues. However, it still could be upgrading in the background. When it comes to iOS 18.4 beta four, 
it seems the battery life seems to be better for me. If we go to battery, battery health, you'll see I'm at 100% with 151 cycles. You can see more information here with coconut battery. And if we take a look at the battery life over the last 10 days, yesterday I had two hours and 15 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 11 minutes of screen idle time and used about 45% of the battery. Today, two hours and 41 minutes of screen active time and one hour of screen idle time, and I'm down to 80%. This is definitely better than we had before. You'll see on the previous beta, I was getting about three and a half hours of battery life or screen on time and using almost 100% of the battery. So I'm seeing a great improvement for me. Not everyone is seeing this, but I'm definitely seeing a two to four hour improvement as far as screen on time. When it comes to benchmarks, I did run those. So let's go ahead and take a look with Geekbench 6. All devices are running iOS 18.4 beta 4 or iPad OS 18.4 beta 4. And we have the M4 iPad Pro 13 inch, then the iPhone 11, then the iPhone 16 Pro Max. All of the scores in general are pretty good. I did run it four times on the 16 Pro Max and this was the best score, but you can see that typically it's around 8,300 to 8,700 for multi-core and around 3,500 for single core. So overall, well within the margin of error and performing as we would expect. Other than those odd stutters here and there, it seems to be a pretty good update. Now let's take a look at the comments and see what you had to say. Gary Tuchel 7699 says 18.3.2 on a 15 Pro Max and no issues at all. Battery life seems better. I can go almost two days without charging. Steve George 5605 said mini 13 on iOS 18.3.2 and no issues noted. Battery life is still good. Joseph Bailey 6548 said 18.3.2 on both my 13 Pro Max and 16 Pro Max and everything seems to be okay on my end. Guess I'm lucky. Jacob JPG says Battery life definitely hit a low point with iOS 18.4 beta 4 comparing to the last one 3 which was so good. Wish I could have kept beta 3 until the official release. F1 or 14NN said iOS 18.4 beta 4 runs really smoothly on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. Battery life improved a lot compared to old betas and the device also doesn't heat up as fast while charging. The only bug I'm still encountering is that the notification center isn't really smooth. It's jumping around sometimes and not letting me scroll all the way down. But apart from that, no other issues as far as I can remember. Lokman Syed says, I've been using iOS 18.4 beta 4 on iPhone 16 Pro Max, and it's been extremely stable. Only a few minor bugs, but nothing critical. Battery life has been okay for me, but not amazing. But that's to be expected. Looking forward to the next beta or RC release on Monday. Now, if we look at storage, we'll go into settings, then general, and then iPhone storage, give it a second to load. And if we scroll to the bottom, you'll see it's taking up a lot more space on the right on iOS 18.4 beta four. That's because Apple intelligence is taking up 7.1 gigabytes compared to 5.75 gigabytes. Maybe there's updated models for things like image playground or possibly updated Apple intelligence models for visual intelligence or something else, but it definitely takes up more space. Also system data varies greatly. You'll see it jump up and down as needed. And that's just used as cache to data and will jump up and down. And as long as it's not taking up space where you can't install apps, that's fine. So that's everything with iOS 18.4 beta four and iOS 18.3.2. If you found anything additional to the features that I've mentioned, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below and let me know if you're having a different experience. I'd love to hear from you as well. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.